Well, welcome everyone to our Tuesday evening conversation. My name is Becca Mary, and I'm our worship director. And as you can see, I am here with Jim and Laura Kennedy. We're so excited that you guys are here. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Thank you. Pleasure. It's always wonderful to talk to you too. I just love, Every time. I love your interaction. I remember when Jim, you first came on the elder board, uh, we used to do these lunches or dinners where we would kind of do an elder meet and greet and we were new to staff. And you guys had come on the other board and you told us your story about meeting. Uh, and I just totally. love it. It is we a good story. You just now. knew, right? Yes. Another time. That will be for another conversation. <laughs> but it's always wonderful to hear from you two. You're a, just a beautiful couple, an example uh, to all of us. So thank you so much for oh, being here. My pleasure. Yeah, as, as we all know, we're going through this extraordinary book by the greatest <laughs> author of all time. Another cute couple now. I know. <laughs> Um, Brian has written a book on the other side of yes, and it is a fantastic book, and we are focusing, uh, we're just going to have a little conversation about the chapters that uh, Brian has just preached on, which are saying yes to gratitude and saying yes to generosity. Uh, so lean in tonight. I thought maybe we just kind of jump right in, if that's okay. Um, so welcome again, and as many of you know, Jim is on our elder board uh, currently, as you've probably seen him around the community and you chair up. It seems like you're kind of everywhere, Jim, a little bit everywhere, in the community, yeah. in the business world, on the golf course. Yeah. Brian says you're an amazing <laughs> golfer. This uh, is true. Yes, and Laura and I are teaching uh, the women's ministry class on Say Yes as well, so that's been really fun. We've had a good time doing yeah. that. On the other side of yes. On the other side of yes. We said yes to teaching together, so that's great. <laughs> Uh, but let's just jump right in. You know, I really love these chapters. Um, I was able to reread them again, and I said to Brian actually just the other night, I said, I think the gratitude chapter might be my favorite chapter in the book. It's, it's huge. It is huge. It's such a great chapter, and it really calls us back to a, um, our perspective, you know, to take inventory on our perspective and the way that we look at things, the way that we look at the world, the way that we look at um, all of our situations, the things that we have, the things that we don't have, and it calls us um, to, to reshape our focus and to refocus on the things of the Lord. And um, I was just wondering if you could share with us, maybe as we reflect on generosity, why, or I mean gratitude, why this topic is so important. How is this played out uh, in your life as being something so important? Yeah. Any thoughts on that, Laura? Uh, yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, in the kingdom of God, it it is so key to be able to focus on what God has blessed me with, mm. rather than on what I may perceive as a lack or a wrong yeah. or an injustice or or whatever it could be. If I focus on where God has placed me, He's placed me here, yeah. there for a purpose. And I can be grateful for that because he's mm -hmm. given me something to do, right? We are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us mm -hmm. to do. And when we can just be grateful for where he has placed us, it puts an entirely new uh, coloring in our life. So how, how do you find yourself grateful? How do you grow in this area of, of being able to see? Because... I think when it comes to gratitude, sometimes we don't see it. So how do we help as we walk through life? How do we see? How do we become people who are more grateful? How have you seen that? Like, how have you seen that, Anna? You, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's practice and discipline. Yeah. Right? So like a lot of things to start, and then it becomes a way of life. But I, I know we pray together every morning. Uh, we often read a chapter of the book together, and we pray together. And... Um, my prayer every, every day starts with gratitude. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for the day. I'm grateful that God's compassions are new every morning. I'm grateful for all he's blessed us with. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for this amazing mm. woman he put me with. And that's the point, you know, yeah. marriage isn't always easy. Yeah. But I know when I express my gratitude for the Lord, it always changes my perspective. Yes. Uh, yeah. And even those, you know, those, those rough moments. And um, so it... it it, it puts God in the rightful place in our lives. Mm. It takes our focus off ourselves. Which is very important. And and it recognizes that, that everything we're able to do is enabled by God. Mm. And um, we always get in trouble when we focus on ourselves. And God continually says to keep our eyes focused mm -hmm. on Him. And gratitude very much does that. And I think it's very closely related to generosity as well. Yes. Because um, the recognizing that God is faithful 
and worthy of our gratitude mm. makes it far easier to give. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, as I say, really, it's a lot of practice. Yes. <laughs> and determination sometimes, and then it becomes a habit. And yes. And then you live a grateful determination, life. Determination, that's a good yeah. word. Yes. Yeah. yes. Determined yeah. to be grateful. Yes. There's a song I've been listening to, and I'm trying to remember, I don't remember who the artist, it's a female, and the line is, it's so hard to see when my eyes are on me. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because the world around us is always going to show us the lack. Right? Like what we're missing, mm. what we don't have. Oh, yeah. What somebody else has that, hmm, I feel like I should have. Right. Um, and, and I love that. I love that picture. And like you said, you, you have to practice it. You have to become determined with it. I saw it going around. Um, somebody forwarded me something one time, and it said, imagine if you only had today what you thanked God for yesterday. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Yeah. What a convicting sentence. And I love that. And I've tried to put that into practice. Lord, I want to thank you for all of these various gifts that we have. I love the chapter where Brian recites that poem or whatever it is. Yes, about, you know, it's I'm, in, yes. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for taxes because it means I have a job. Yes. I'm grateful for what, because yeah. I have food. Right? For my tight clothes yeah. because <laughs> it means yeah. I have enough to eat. Yeah. But, but there's a reframing that can go on in the moment. You yeah. know, um, I'm thinking right. I, had, I had a business reversal recently, right? And, and it ended up costing a lot of money. And, and I could either focus on that, but I think, no, I, I'm just grateful for all that God's provided. Yeah. The company's still here. Everybody's yes. still here. We're still, yes. still, you know, all these things. And, um, and then, and then it enabled me to say, well, this is in God's hands. He, mm-hmm. he allowed this to happen for his That's purposes. Right. And um, I'm grateful provider. for that too, because yes. he's going to work through that. Yes. But if I just stay focused on the problem, it, I wouldn't have gotten to that point of really a peace and acceptance and gratitude Yeah. because I know God's going to use it. So yes. um, the battle is oftentimes right just in the moment. Yes, that's, that's true. It's the moment. It, mm. you, you make that decision uh, in the moment. You know, we can wake up in the morning and be grateful. Like, what did R.T. Kendall say? Keep like a, a gratitude journal. Oh, yes, yes. Like list five yes, things. Five things I'm, yes. I'm terrible at journals. I know. <laughs> Yeah, terrible <laughs> but it's such a great exercise yes. but it's the moment yeah when when you want to be disgruntled or yeah. stingy or yeah you know no that's mine whatever that's when you need to have that discipline to say oh, open hand this mm-hmm. is this is from god to you mm-hmm. i find that it's it's so refreshing to be around grateful people too People yeah. who yeah. are just, they find a reason to bless. I, one of my daughters is like over, and like she's an extreme encourager. You know, she comes home from school every day in middle school, you know, every day. And she's like, we just have the best class, mom. Everybody's so nice, which I know is not true. <laughs> um, oh, everybody's, all so, oh, my teachers are lens. amazing. I mean, she just, she has this lens over her. I'm like, where did she get this thing? I mean, she is like an aura of positivity all the time, but she always sees how beautiful things are, and she always sees the good in things. And I think, oh my goodness, what a gift that lens has been. I think, Lord, I just, I want to be more like that. I want to have that kind of lens where I can always see, because it's refreshing. It's refreshing to be around people like that. Now, and some people are born with it, not many, but some are. And then the rest of us kind of have to go. <laughs> help Determined me to God. practice. <laughs> yes. Yes. Help me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think some, maybe sometimes, depending on what we're, we go through in life too, that can help. Uh, that can break down that filter. And so to be refreshed by the Lord, and, and to ask Him for that continually, to say, Lord, let me be a more grateful person. I think that the Lord can help us rebuild that in our life when we say when we say yes to that. Yeah. I love that you say it doesn't happen, Brian said in the book, and you, you reiterated it, it doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. You know, every mm-hmm. once in a while you have those, like my kid Nora. Yeah. <laughs> She's just a doll. Um, you know, I've had three of your daughters in Sunday school now. Yes. I, I, I yeah. know which ones you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know immediately. Three we don't have <laughs> yes. So you had mentioned that you guys pray together as a couple, which I think is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's an amazingly intimate thing as well. Um, and it, that also takes practice, I think, for some couples. Yes. Yeah. Um, it did for us. It didn't yeah. come naturally for no, It's so easy to find an excuse not to do it or, yes. oh, i got to get up it's busy, the day starting. Oh, yeah. Or, and, and when we were first married, it was even like, 
awkward somehow yes. praying together. Yeah. We really had to grow in it. We couldn't give up. Yes. Yeah, yeah it comes with time and it yeah. comes with practice. And I just, I love that. Have there been other ways um, that you guys have helped put gratitude into practice in your life? Either as a couple, as a family, any ways you could encourage um, us, the church community, yeah. to put gratitude into practice? Did I just put you on the spot completely? <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, did you not give me this question? <laughs> For me, it flows out. It, comes, yeah. it shows itself in generosity, I think. Yeah. Um, I really think it, it flows out. Like, gratitude for me is a very... Um, I'm always grateful for everything anybody does and mm. express that gratitude to people. You and do. You always express that. Th I think yeah. that's, a, that's part of it, yeah. um, but I don't think of that as that's just natural for us now. Yeah, um, but it, it's, it has been a process. I mean, I'm, uh, along with journaling, I think it's a writing thing. I'm terrible with thank you mm. notes also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mother drilled those into my life, so like somebody writes me a thank you note or gives me a thank you gift, and I need to write a thank you note for their thank you gift. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. keep it going. That's just, I just, it's like this horrible guilt that weighs over me if I don't write yeah. the thank you. I'm, I'm going to go in a, a different direction yeah. on this because um, it counted all joy when you encounter various trials. Yeah. I have made that an exercise mm. for myself to be grateful when things don't go the way yeah. I want them to go. And that has been a real blessing for me. I don't, mm. I can't even explain why, but I recognize as scripture tells me, that God is working something out in me. Yes. And I just say, thank you, God. I know that this is hitting something hard in me that needs to change. Yes. And thank you for shaping me this way. I think that's so important, too, because it's so easy to become fixated on the issue and to let it consume our thoughts and to let it consume our conversation. And when you can take a posture of thank it's it is much easier to be grateful when everything's going really well. Oh, yeah. But when things are not going well, to have to say, Lord, thank you that you are walking with me in this difficult situation. Lord, thank you for Find the things the you thankful. are, the way you are refining me in yeah. this situation, for the things that you are going before me and, and working out that maybe I don't know, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. Here's a practice, I guess. Um, you know, it, we do a lot of email exchanges, right, at work. Everybody does. And um, I, I just I just always make it a habit to acknowledge when I get an email from somebody. If I request something, and they send it to me, yes, it's just business. Yeah. But um, but I, I always respond with a thanks exclamation point or thanks is exactly yes. what I needed or thanks this is perfect. It's just yeah. it's just a habit, and and I think it means something to people. You know when you yes. you, you tend to think well it's the third time I've done that today for that same person, but it's still meaningful. You're yeah. acknowledging and, and, and it sets a tone yeah. that's positive yes. and. Oh, that's wonderful. That just has just deeply convicted me, Jim. I want you to know. I will be sending thank you emails for all of those things. And it's a lot easier than a lot easier than a handwritten note. Oh, at Christmas time. At Christmas time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I write a handwritten thank you note to every one of my employees. Oh. It was that's easy great. when it was seven or eight of them. Now it's seventy. And <laughs> it's a labor of love. It but, was a discipline. He's like, yeah. you know, for a week I have to do this many tonight, I have to do this many the next yep. night. He really yeah. does a good job because it's very personal. He doesn't just do thank you, Jim. Yes. He, yeah. he personalizes it. So that, those are the practices you can yes. play. That, yes. That, and you have to be intentional with it. Now you yeah. know I have 70 notes to write. I want to do this well. I can't put it off till the afternoon before the Christmas party. Right. No, <laughs> no. So you have to put an intentional plan in place to mm -hmm. express gratitude, to demonstrate gratitude, to practice yeah. gratitude. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And I love how you linked gratitude and generosity um, yeah. all throughout the book. There's so many, I love how Brian kind of paired up these chapters as they yes. go together because uh, generosity is an expression of our gratitude and a recognition mm -hmm. of where all things come from. Now, I know that uh, some people think, oh my gosh, they've hit the general. I love how Brian even says it right in the chapter, like, don't skip this chapter. You know, people are like, oh great, the church is talking about money. And... Um, no, money is one aspect. Money, like giving of our financial gifts, it's an outward expression of the things that are in our heart and the way that we hold on to things. And so we're talking about generosity of our time, generosity of encouragement. Yeah. How often are we encouraging people? Um, sometimes we don't want to hold. We want to hold on to some of that stuff. Some 
uh, hold generosity and forgiveness. And that's a yeah, huge one as right? we tackle the Generously forgiveness. lavish forgiveness yes, on people. Yes, mm. generosity and compassion mm. and kindness. How are we going out of our way? How are we being generous? Not just being kind, but be a generous with our kindness to people. Yes. Being generous with our encouragement. Very being good. generous. You know, and that speaks to that email um, about, mm -hmm. you know, showing your gratitude. So our generosity, it's an outpouring of uh of what's in our hearts. It's an outward expression of that. I know um, uh, for me, I'd love maybe just each of us to share just how generosity has kind of affected our life in a personal story. For me, mm -hmm. um, I can clearly say I have zero apologies about um, generosity and giving because God absolutely radically changed my life when I, when I approached him. Mm -hmm. And it came through generously through giving. Now, it was, <laughs> it was a small amount of money, but... Um, I remember I was a young professional. I had not found a home church yet at the time. And uh, I, I really wanted to tithe on my income, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to give it. And I remember, I, I, I remember exactly where I was. I was walking through the second floor of my office tower. And I said to the Lord, where do you want me to tithe? And boom, I'm telling you, the Lord put a missionary, an obscure missionary that I knew from years be before, Find this missionary, give this much to this missionary. I'm telling you, I almost, I almost fell over. I could not believe. Mm -hmm. It is the first time I remember hearing the voice of the Lord. Wow. Like, hearing yeah. it. And it was not audible, but it was so apparent. It was nearly audible. And so I often say to people, if you've not heard from the Lord, if you don't know what it sounds like to hear from the Lord, ask him how much you should give and who you should give to. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll tell you what, well. it changed my life. And yeah. And I called that missionary. The story is unbelievable. Like they could, this person couldn't believe that I found. They had been praying that they would have this amount supported to them for their 12-month trip to Africa. And I, that was the amount that the Lord had put on my heart. I'm telling you, it was so exciting wow. to be part of God's kingdom. And that God used me, little old me, yeah. and linked me with somebody from a, like my past in a very like specific way. And all of a sudden, giving was not this obligation. I was like used for God's kingdom to change the world through this tiny little bit of amount of money that I wanted to commit. And it was it was just the most exciting giving story. And so I am never apologetic about saying we should financially give to God's kingdom. It is mm -hmm. so exciting. It is so exciting. Yeah. So um that's just my story on generosity. And that's just one yeah. very small story. <clears throat> I know you guys probably have stories we'd love to hear. You know, I think, um, well, there's two stories about money, but I want to talk mostly about ones that aren't money, but because I think you raised a really important point that asking God and then having confidence that he can answer. And yeah. um, God built confidence to me very early on in the same way. Um, a good friend of mine had shared that he was struggling financially and he couldn't pay his tax bill. Didn't say how much it was. And, uh, God gave me a very specific number. This has never happened before and never since. A very specific number. It's something ended in $83. <laughs> so I, one thing I've learned, too, when God puts a number on your head, you give it immediately. Immediately, Don't yes. wait. Because yes. then you start to go, well, did I really hear God? What's that? You know, yes. Just be confident. God gave that number. And, yes. And so I wrote him a check. And, and God gave will it to honor him. it. I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. Just, I gave him the check. Does. He said, this is exactly. Stop. My tax liability. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> the dollar. It was, you know, yes. just it was just. Um, oh, wow. And another time, um, and that wasn't a huge amount. Another time, um, when you own a business, you you go through times when you're you're doing pretty well, and times mm -hmm. when you're really poor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the ups and downs of yep. business. And um, this was a time when you actually weren't doing very well. And uh, we went to a conference and we heard someone speak, and uh, and I've learned to always ask. I always ask. Yes. Every time someone asks, yes. I say. What do you want me God, to get? What do you want me to get? Yes. And you can have confidence. A lot of the times, I don't get, I don't get a number. Nothing. Mm. It's okay. I'm, this is not one that God wants us to contribute to. Mm -hmm. But this time, he put a, a number, which for us was very large at the time. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're <laughs> like, wait a minute. i got to go back yeah. to the drawing board, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that one was too yeah. much. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a Sunday <laughs> morning. The decimal point. And, and, I, and I know to write the check. So that afternoon, I wrote the check and, and gave it. And... Um, the next day, I, I told this in church a couple years ago. The next day, um, I, we got a check in the mail at work for a debt that I had been chasing for two years. We figured we ne that was never going to pass. Never going to pass. We kind of just given up. The check came the very next day. 
for ten times the amount. Oh my God! That I give him. It, I mean, that's, it's kind of crazy. So that just builds confidence that that we can hear from the yes. voice of God. And since then, God's given us much larger numbers and time. And we go, and that's, but every time God has proven faithful, it yeah. is remarkable. Yes. Not that it's always easy to do. I no. Know, we still struggle. I still struggle with it. I, I, no. I, I start to second guess myself on that, but but. What I do know is that God has been incredibly faithful yeah. every single time. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that we focus on the fact that this is God being generous. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because there, there's this uh, arm of theology that says give money so that God will bless you. Yeah, no. And that's not where no. we're at at mm -hmm. all. This is just. No. <laughs> that's not where we're at at all. This is God being generous with yes. his resources. Yes. And he blesses us. Yes. To be able to be the conduit. Yes. yes. And he reveals to us his heart in these situations. So his heart is, I am a generous God. Yes. And you experience that in that situation yeah. of the ten times more. Yeah. Yes. I am a God who goes before you. And Becca, I have a plan for you. And you are contributing to my kingdom. And he demonstrated that to me through my giving story. And so he teaches us principles about himself and about ourselves mm -hmm. through generosity. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's great, Laura. Yeah. yeah. The other important way, I think uh, Brian makes this in the chapter, our, our giving is not judged by other people's giving. No, quantity-wise. You know, yeah, no. I mean, God gives some people a lot, so they can give a lot. And some people less, and they give less, but the people that give less give more. The Buddha's might is such an example. Yes. Right. There are people who are really struggling in the world who give everything they have, and mm. that is so much more generous than anything. And it's not just money, done. right? Yeah. They give care. They, they, mm -hmm. God, yeah. I'm thinking of one particular woman who just goes out and helps people in their mm -hmm. homes, takes care mm -hmm. of elderly who are, are losing it, or whatever, how, I don't know how you want to say that, but she's just so generous. With, she doesn't have a lot. She, mm -hmm. just, she doesn't have an income, yeah. but she just goes and helps people. Mm. Just, I remember one of, my, one of our elders... Um, this is early on, too, when we first came. One of our elders had said, uh, he was setting up offering back when we had Areopagus. Do you guys remember oh, the that Saturday was, night service? Wow. I know, Areopagus. Okay. Do a word study on that one. <laughs> um, but he was setting up offering, and it was the, such a beautiful offering setup. And one of the things he said is, you know, I always, I always, I worked towards giving 10%, and then I gave 10%. And um, he ended up becoming very, a very successful business person. But then he said, the Lord put on my heart, why don't you just give what you can? Why have you locked yourself into a number? Mm. Why don't you just give out of the outpouring? And so this family, they gave financially generous, but they became leaders of services. Mm. They, he ended up becoming an elder at the church, and they gave of their time. Mm. They gave of their resources. Right. They gave of their encouragement, of their prayer, of their commitment, of their friendship, and their whole life. As I reflect, and I didn't know them that well, but the short time, the few years that I knew them, I would describe this couple as a couple that gave themselves away for God's kingdom. Yeah. They just lived it. It was amazing. Wow. It was such a beautiful demonstration yeah. of the kingdom of God in operation here. Yeah. Uh, so um, the, the, when you give, uh, I'll try to look up money in a moment, but I, I do believe God calls us to give 10% of your income to the yeah. local church. That's I my do interpretation of it. Yeah. Um, once you make that adjustment, Honestly, that's it. Just comes out of right account automatically. Yeah. You don't think about it. I don't. I don't get any sense of struggle around that or satisfaction. It just become. I'm sure it's a habit for you yeah. as well. And it just becomes. The 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 real reward now comes from offerings over and above yeah. that. Yeah. And that's when God puts a number on your yeah. on your heart, or, um, and that's when it also becomes a struggle. Mm -hmm. And say, so, well, I I could use that. Yeah. The other thing about money is that, I don't think anybody really cares about money for money's sake. Uh, Brian makes this point about the rich young ruler. You know, yeah. Something was king in his life. Yes. And it, it's what money means. Right? Yeah. Money can mean security. Mm -hmm. It could mean um, status. Mm -hmm. It can mean being able to pay for your kids' college educations. I mean, there's mm -hmm. money. It's not what money itself, what money means. Mm -hmm. And so, so we have to be very careful to make sure we get from God what we want, you know, what He's wanting us to look to Him for, not yes. what money. So our security isn't money, our security is in. God. Yes. Right. Um, yes. If we're generous with our money and things, God's going to take care of our kids' educations. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's that's yeah. the way it works. It, it's uh, um, so to get off that we um, 
you know, we got married. Um, Laura's a home missionary, so she was already, you know, giving her life. Penniless. I was yeah. already penniless. <laughs> already penniless. I had no money. We're very poor. Rich in the kingdom of God, Laura. <laughs> yeah, we're very poor. Yeah. Um, but even before we got married, Laura reminded me of this, before we got married, um, I told her that um, she could do work, whatever she wanted to do, but I never wanted to rely on her income. We wanted to live a lifestyle that would not count any money from Laura's mm -hmm. work. And um, I said, no problem. I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. I'm your lady. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Laura's, Laura's dowry was a vet, by the way. A chevette. A chevette. Yeah. Yeah. 74 chevette or something. It was, anyway. Um, Thank you, Dad. Uh, but that freed up Laura to do continued missionary work. Yes. And then we had children. She was able to spend time with the kids full time, which she loved doing. Mm -hmm. um, she now volunteers, you know, she volunteers all over the place. Yes, I, um, I will point that out too. Sorry to interrupt <laughs> you. But at one point we did like this serving study at the church and, uh, you know, find out who's serving where and all this kind of stuff. I think your name, Laura, came up more than anybody else's name. You have served, I think, in every single capacity in the church, you still continue to do it. Not all at once. I uh, yes, it, that's correct. Not all <laughs> at once. You. Sometimes no is the healthiest answer. Yes. But um, I'm just saying it is amazing. As we went back and looked through that, Adam and I were just laughing. I mean, it was it was almost comical in all the areas that you have served <laughs> in in the church. But um, so I'll let you finish. But then yeah. I'd love to hear like any you know thoughts you have yeah. on that and yeah. maybe yeah. how you've seen the Lord move in there. Well, okay. Yes, cloth diapers because we couldn't afford. Disposables oh and yeah. you know yeah. couldn't get the car fixed when it broke and we yeah we struggled yeah. a lot. Of my Chevette well, before we got rid of it had water coming up through the floorboards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the nice. struts had broken through the wheel well. You know oh it, it was like a bad bad. I'm very yeah. impressed that you knew struts yeah. and wheel yeah. well. Thank you. <laughs> but we always tie. Yes. And yeah. um, in fact, I just looked at my bank account, looked at my tax returns from 1990 yes. to see what we made and how much we gave away, and and yeah. You always tithe. We didn't have a lot of money, and we continued to tithe. And, and the point of that story is God is incredibly faithful. Yes. I don't think we've ever not been able to pay a bill when it was due. Yes. Ever. In our entire lives, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, that is me. I heard, um, who's that Christian guy who does the money yeah, debt right. free? Yeah, Larry Burkett was the old no, guy. No, no, no. I can't no, remember. I'm, yeah, I Dave. can't remember. His Dave Ramsey. Ramsey. Yes, okay. I met his daughter, and she's a brilliant speaker. Anyway, she, you know, she said oftentimes we think of like our savings, our expenses, well, no, no, our immediate expenses, you know, our fixed expenses, our variable expenses, then saving, and then if there's anything left over, we give. Mm -hmm. And she said, you, and she challenged this group, there were thousands of women at this conference. Mm -hmm. She said, flip that upside down. She said, your giving, your savings, your fixed expenses than your variable expenses. And she yeah. said it, it's amazing how when you flip it upside down, there is there is freedom in the way that you operate. And Brian alludes to that even in that story with like the two dollars, you know, the yeah. kid. Right. He's like, Oh God, you lost your dollar and then he has that really powerful line that says, For some reason we'll always find a reason why God's dollar is the one that we don't have left. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such a powerful story. So, Laura, speaking of our um, star, extraordinary, volunteer extraordinaire, um, you kind of, not kind of, you absolutely have given so much of your time and your resources. And, um, and it is a sacrifice as a married couple to say, no, we could have easily had two incomes, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to have one. And you raised your children. You've been able to be a local missionary here in our yeah. church. And uh, I don't know if you could just so share like, just a testimony about that. Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to start the story with the fact that I'm really bad with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and I was raised to just... It's good, very good with math, just perspective. Just, you know, yes, <laughs> I'm very good with math. I was always in advanced math classes, <laughs> yeah. but I'm stingy because I was raised to spend very little. Mm. That's the best plan. Just mm. spend as little as you can. And so when it comes to financial generosity, I'm not your girl. Mm. I'm so glad that I'm married to Jim and I have been able to just say, this is your department. Mm. Because if someone asks me for money, I'm going to give them this much and think I've done a great thing. And Jim will inevitably, because we'll pray about it, and say, how much did <laughs> God give money. you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want to go to Jim. Isn't okay. it pay up God's heart? 
is that though? It's a little bit like that in our marriage. Uh, so I am very comfortable giving time mm. and hospitality. It, you know, I these are things that I can quantify generously and know where my boundaries are that are important to have yes and be generous so i've been blessed by being able thank you jim and god to do this gratitude i because i i love coming to the church yes. and working behind the yes. desk when i could and um having people into our home and I will tell you how this has helped me and you're finding out about all my weaknesses I'm not like the best housekeeper <laughs> but because we have community group at our home yes I have to clean yes. <laughs> God has really helped me a lot with my weaknesses through the generosity that happens I'm always grateful when we have people mm. staying in our home or when uh, we've opened it for some event because it helps me in my areas of weakness to mm. overcome them. It's that it's an issue of stewardship, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really great. It's also uh, following Laura's uh, point that we we God calls us to be generous, really in our areas of gifting. Mm. Um, so there's places I, I'm gifted that I'm able to be generous in, yes. and there's other places like I, I, I mission trips just suck life out of me. Yeah. I, it's just not me. I, yes. I don't know what it is about it. It just it's not me. It's working I, in the nursery I'll for me. A fun mission trip. <laughs> don't enter much of it. <laughs> but I, uh, yes. don't make me go. Know, but but community yeah. service, those kinds of stuff. Yeah. Elders, you know, yeah. that, I, I thrive there. Yeah. Um, but one of my gifts is building, and um, I'm not an architect. I'm not a artist at all. But God's given me the gift of building really community, mm. really functional spaces and yes. people that fit in it and how it works and it. To just to bless people, creating community. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when we built our house, we we did a, a major renovation. Um, that's far bigger than anybody ever really needs. But we knew it'd be used for ministry. Mm. And but those are my gifts to build a space yes. that it's just people can relax in and feel comfortable in, whether it's ten people or fifty yes. people. It's just it's just a remarkable space that God enabled me to do. Yes. And um, and it's easy to say, well, that's a waste of money, right? But, but I just know these are my gifts. Yes. And I know it's going to be used for, yeah. for ministry. And that house has been used. And I remember we were building it at a vision of uh, the living area um, filled with people worshiping God. Mm. Just this vision I picked this. And, um, and a friend of mine actually started a church and he started it in our house. We didn't go to it, but he started it in our house. And we came home from church Amazing. one day. I opened the front door and you can see the living room. <laughs> and church. it was my vision. It was that the was, vision. They were, yes. they, were, they were doing it. Yes. And, um, it's delightful. Yeah. Yes. And so many people have been lived there over the years, and yes, we blessed in many ways, and it's always a blessing for us. And well, I, I love that though that you have seen your house as something for the Lord to use, and that that's my first impression of you. I met you when we were, were we no, I just had my second daughter. We just moved here. We've been here like eight yeah. weeks. You guys were hosting a huge party. I think we had a guest speaker in was town. It the prayer it was a prayer, prayer breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. I don't know what it yeah. was. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I was underdressed. I just had a baby. I didn't realize it was like a black tie event. You showed up at the door in a gown, by the way. I was like, I'm khaki, wrinkled khaki. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus, my first impression. Um, but I, but that was my impression of you. Like you had this home and you had opened it up and you were such beautiful hosts. And you've continued to do so. We have our staff retreats at your home. You have so many meetings, your community group, your house church, missionaries. And uh, it's been beautiful to see that used for the Lord. Yeah, and we get such pleasure in that. Yes, yes. And she, yes. Laura, by the way, when we got married, did not know she had the gift of hospitality. I, I, this I, is I, such a development. You had mentioned that. I can't yeah, even believe yeah. that after being at your house. You're well, such a great host. When, yeah. when we first were married, uh, the first place that, well, no, I guess, the first place that we entertained was the second floor of a Victorian where we were renting on close to Main Street, <laughs> Danbury. Yes. And every time Jim invited people over, I would cry. I, I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to cook. I don't, I don't, I don't. Yes. It was terrible. Yeah. But I learned, yeah. and now I just love it. Yes. It was really fascinating. Yeah, you've yes. grown. You've been determined, like we even talked about gratitude, to work it out. Yes, you have to press you into work it. Work it out, press yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Can I, can, I tell, I know, yeah. can I tell one final story? Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. this, this is about how we don't know what a small act of kindness can do, mm. pay dividends. So um, when I graduated from college in 83, don't do the math. <laughs> no, I actually graduated in 81. 
don't do the math. Um, this is like 1983. Um, I, I was lost after college. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I did a bunch of odd jobs, and um, I went to a good school, and I came out with nothing. And it was an economic downturn. It was, mm. it was the worst recession since the Great Recession. But um, so I did. I did carpentry, I did you know, framing, I did um, some freelance programming, I drove cars across country, I did pool service. Oh my I, just, I, I had no idea what to do or how to engage in the job market. But I was a basketball player, that was my passion in life. I played all through school and college, and, um, and, and I would go to the gym every night and play basketball. That was my thing. The, the YMCA. And if you're a basketball player, you know there's rubber basketballs that are awful to play with and they hurt your fingers, it's just awful. And there's leather basketballs, which back yeah. then, they're very expensive back then. For someone like me, and uh, but it was my prized possession, my leather basketball. And I was in the gym one night with a guy I'd seen around a couple of times, and we we're the only two in the gym, and I had to go, and I had the only leather basketball. And I said, uh, I said, well, here, Greg, you just you know keep it, give it to me tomorrow whenever I see you again, I'll go get it back. He goes, you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, I trust you. Whatever. You had just met him. I, I I had seen him at the gym a couple times, so okay. I'm not sure he knew his name at that time, but you no, know, no, it was Greg, and. Um, and so then we got to know each other a little bit after that, but, but he asked me for dinner, like uh, after dinner, like a month later. And he said, Jim, a couple of guys and I are thinking about starting a, a computer rental company, PC computer rental company. Be the first one in Connecticut. This is back in the days of IBM PCs. Mm -hmm. He said, would you consider us hiring you to start the company? There's no, there's no reason for this. Right. And, um, but I said, sure, I got, I got nothing going on. Let me check my <laughs> schedule. Uh, my pool service, I think I can lose that job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, the, uh, uh, so we started this. He put up the money, and I'd never started a company before. It was an amazing experience to learn how to wow. start a company and learn sales and accounting and the technology, and all the technology. It's unbelievable. Did, everything. did everything. And, um, and that started my career in IT as an entrepreneur. And I think it was that, that just that one small gesture yes. of kindness yes. that set the whole thing off. Yes. And uh, so we just don't know exactly what seeds our generosity is planting, but, uh, planting, but cultivate a generous lifestyle, yes. which really is about God's faithfulness. Yes. We're just giving back to him what he's yes. given us, trusting him. Regifting, as Brian says in the book. Yeah, I love yeah. that regifting. By the way, I was thinking about that story. Yeah. It may be that she wanted to bring a gift to this to her cousin's house. It was a cousin or something. Yes. She had nothing to give, and she loved the game, and she was giving something that really meant a lot. Yes, to her. that's what we're gonna think. Jim. Yes, that's that's the story, that's and we're you gonna stick to. We're gonna stick to that story. I'm gonna disregard the fact that she said she didn't like the game. We're gonna stick to that story. Well, yeah. She was trying to make her cousin feel better. Yes, she was giving something generous. Oh, yes. So uh, anyway, well, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Gone long. It's fine. Sorry. It's <laughs> fine. Come on, it's not a Sunday morning. I, I, we, we love. Just, it's the only story Great about stories. God's faithfulness. Yes. It's just, yes. I love it. We could yeah. probably be here another four hours yes. talking about. Oh, absolutely, all the absolutely. Things. You will never sow into God's kingdom and not reap a kingdom harvest. A kingdom yeah. right yeah. harvest. God's yeah. kingdom harvest. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in our spirit person, in our life, and where God is moving and what God is doing. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember who was, who was it who said, uh, you're never, you, you can never outgive God. You're never going to give yourself into poverty in that sense. Like, mm -hmm. God is so abundantly gracious. He is yeah. so abundantly generous. Yeah. And um, let's just keep that in mind, you know, that we're just yeah. re-gifting back to Him yeah, the things right. that He's given us. Very good. Yeah, He is Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for yeah. this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you for Tell sharing. Good stories. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, it's good stories. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your week. <laughs>